snow bike ride. Here we go. No, it's definitely fun, but it's also very challenging. You wanna go explore? Yeah, let's go. Okay. We are on a snow bike riding adventure today, and it's a lot of fun. But I have to say, I think it would be very difficult to use the bike as our mode of transportation all winter long. But there's got to be another way. There's always another way. <laughs> this is true. There is always another way. Yeah. Let's check it out. In this episode, I'm going to show you one easy fix to reduce the impact of your vehicle that doesn't involve getting a new car or riding your bike everywhere you go. I'm Megan Haney-Greer, this is The Imperfect Conservationist, and we're getting started right now. Our cars. We have an age-old love affair with our vehicles, and this is a history steeped in some serious nostalgia. Our cars and trucks are touchstones for each era, represented in our music and films and our lives. If you asked, most people would remember their first car. I mean, a lot of people even go as far as to name their cars. Mine was the Gumdrop. That was my first car. It was so cute. And then I had the Blue Beast and then the Silver Hippo. What can I say? We get really attached to our cars. The big environmental issues with driving our vehicles are pretty universally known at this point. The main one being the emissions. Burning fossil fuels like gasoline and diesel is a major contributor to air pollution and climate change. Cars release approximately 333 million tons of carbon dioxide, along with other nasty greenhouse gases, into the atmosphere every year, which is about 20% of the world's total greenhouse gas emissions. And in places like here in the US, well over half of the whole transportation sector's emissions are coming from our regular passenger vehicles. Oh. It's important in addressing any issue to have a good understanding of the problem so we can know what the issue is and wrap our heads around why we care. Then we can move from the problem onto the solution and figuring out what we can actually do about it. And this is where the imperfect conservationist comes in. Some of the most common solutions we hear to help lighten this impact are good options, but the problem is, is that they aren't necessarily always achievable for everyone. Number one we often hear is to buy a greener, cleaner car, which is awesome if you're able to buy a new car. Number two, another solution we hear a lot about is to carpool, share a ride. Also a great option because each ride does make an impact. The difficulty with this is that the availability of public transportation and willingness to participate varies widely. And not to mention COVID-19 has added an extra layer of complication to this one as well. Finally, a third option that I'm very well acquainted with here in Boulder, Colorado is riding your bike instead of taking your car. I mean, it even got a beer named after it out here, which is a major Colorado thing, both craft beer and bike riding. Maybe not together, but you know, what could possibly go wrong? Ouch! Riding your bike to and from is awesome, and I really admire those that rock this one. Now I confess, I am not one of these people, but if you can do any of these, they're solid solutions. But what about the rest of us? What are we supposed to do instead? We collectively spend a lot of time in our cars, and much of this time is spent just sitting, waiting, and idling. We idle while we're on the phone, while we're waiting for the kids to get out of school or soccer practice, or sitting in the drive-thru to grab that cup of coffee. Most of it's just for our convenience. When I was in my 20s, I had a big truck. That was the Blue Beast. And it had one of those little handy keypad, number keypads on the door so that you could lock the door and leave the keys in it and leave it running. And at the time, I would do that pretty regularly just for my own convenience. This made me a puffer. That's what you call it when you leave your car running. I don't, I don't know why I think that's such a funny name, but I do. 
And you know, most of the time we feel like we've got a pretty good reason for it. Maybe it's really hot outside or cold, or you're warming up the engine, which by the way, is a myth. Since the 1990s with fuel injection technology, you don't need to warm up your engine. You can just get in and drive. Or pulling over to send a text message, which please continue to do that. Don't text and drive. But this idol has a big impact. In addition to contributing to climate change, air pollution also causes numerous respiratory and cardiovascular problems. In fact, 30,000 people are killed by car emissions annually in the United States alone. For every 10 minutes you spend idling your car, one pound of carbon dioxide and other harmful greenhouse gases are released out into the atmosphere. So at the time, back in my 20s, I just didn't know. I certainly wasn't thinking about emissions or my ability to have an impact in that way. I eventually became more aware of this issue later in my 20s, which involved a lot of nagging from a very persistent uncle who lives in Boulder. But it was good because it helped me connect the dots from my action to the world around me, and I changed this not so sustainable habit of mine. Contrary to popular belief, restarting your car does not burn more fuel than leaving it idle. In fact, idling for just 10 seconds wastes more gas than restarting the engine. So if you're gonna be parked and waiting for more than 10 seconds, you can shut that engine off and feel good about it. Now don't do it like at a stoplight or whatever, because that could get kind of crazy. Three things I consider whenever I'm thinking about making a change is I ask, is it easy, affordable, and impactful? Now let's see if stopping the idle hits all the marks. Is it easy? Absolutely. Most of the idle is just convenience. With a little awareness in the moment, you can make the decision and shut off the engine while you're waiting. And there are some really easy workarounds too in most situations, like going, getting out of the car and sitting in the shade or popping on your jacket if it's cold. And you can skip the long car line at the drive-thru and just go inside and order. Affordable? Even better. Stopping the idle will save you money, up to $650 a year in gas savings, depending on your current puffer habits. Impactful? Yes. This reduces your emissions and positively impacts the bigger picture on climate change. And when you shut off your engine in the pickup lane at school or the store where you're waiting, you are doing your part to improve the air quality where you live. And that directly impacts you and your family. And the best part is this won't go unnoticed. When you set this good example by shutting off the engine, maybe getting out of the car while you're waiting, other puffers will take notice too. That's such a funny term. There's good stuff happening in the big picture here too. With the growing shift in our global awareness on climate change, many countries and local governments are really amping up their approach to finding better solutions to fossil fuels and addressing emissions with more ambitious goals than ever before. The technology is here too, for more fuel efficient vehicles, cleaner fuels, and electric cars and trucks. Car manufacturers are beginning to take note of the growing consumer demand for greener, cleaner, affordable options as well. So keep flexing that consumer muscle. This is just a little sample of some of the good things going on, and there's more in the links below if you wanna take a deep dive there. This pivot is a small thing, and that's exactly what makes it sustainable. These small actions drive big change because they're achievable and they catch on. What you do every day matters, and stopping your idol is just one way you can be a part of the solution. I hope you enjoyed this episode and that you feel empowered to give this simple solution a try. For more videos like this with easy bite-sized ways you can make a positive impact starting today, make sure you hit that subscribe button below and then tap the bell icon so that you're sure to get notified when my new videos post. Also, I'd love to hear from you. If you have an idea of something you'd like for me to cover in an upcoming episode or a specific conservation struggle you're dealing with, let me know in the comments below and we can do our best to tackle it together. Thanks for watching The Imperfect Conservationist. I'll see you next time. Oh, that was fun. Oh, it was fun. Thanks for going with me. Yeah, you're welcome.